use tonight. Buhari to dissolve cabinet as he presides over his last FEC meeting. Buhari writes Senate seeks approval to pay 226 billion naira. Pantemi moves belongings out of his office. Yoruba Oba set agenda for incoming government. And to sport, it won't be easy, Italy coach says about tough test against the flying eagles of Nigeria. Now the news in detail. President Muhammad Buhari is currently presiding over his last Federal Executive Council meeting at the Council Chamber of the Presidential Villa in Abuja. Today, Wednesday, May 24, 2023, marks Buhari's final weekly meeting with members of his cabinet, confirming the special assistant on digital communications to the president. Bashir Ahmed, in a tweet, said President Mohamed Buhari presides over his last Federal Executive Council meeting as the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria today at the Council Chambers, the State House Abuja. The next FEC meeting will be presided over by our President elect Ola Ahmed Tinumbu after assembling his cabinet, his cabinet members in the coming weeks. Vice President Yemi Oshibadro and all 44 ministers and ministers of state are physically in attendance. The president, according to information, started the meeting with swearing in of seven federal commissioners of the Revenue Mobilization Physical and Allocation Commission. The Federal Executive Council is expected to adopt the conclusions of the last three of its meetings. The president is also expected to officially dissolve the cabinet before the meeting ends. After the official cabinet dissolution, the ministers will hand over to the permanent secretaries in their respective ministries. The next FEC meeting on Wednesday, May 31st, 2023, will be presided over by the incoming president, Ola Ahmed Tinobo. President Mohamed Buhari has written to the Senate seeking approval for a request to pay the judgment debt in the sum of 226 billion naira. Information report that the norms were owed by the federal government through the issuance of pro misread notes. The president's letter of request was read at plenary by Senate President Ahmed Lawan during plenary on Wednesday, four months after 648 cases were brought against the president and other federal government power starters. In the view of the foregoing, I wish to request the Senate to kindly consider and improve these its resolution. The settlement of a top priority judgment debt and general judgment debt inquired by the federal MDAs. The Honorable Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice and Honorable Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning shall provide any information that may be required by the Senate for the consideration of this request. The Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Mr. Aubakar Malami San, revealed that Buhari's regime had secured a conviction in 397 terrorism cases while 7,000 crime and anti-corruption cases had been successfully prosecuted by the government in eight years. Five days to the end of President Mohamed Buhari's tenure, minister have commenced handing over to permanent secretaries in their ministries ahead of the dissolution of the cabinet. The 8-year tenure of President Buhari, which commenced on May 29, 2015, comes to an end Monday, May 29, 2023. Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Professor Issa Ali Ibrahim Pantemi, performed his last official assignment last week when he inaugurated the Blockchain Committee in Abuja. A staff member of the ministry said Pantemi's aides were seen on Monday, moving some of their principal's documents and belongings out of his office. Meanwhile, the FCT Minister Malem Mohamed Bello has ordered the demolition of the popular UTC markets in the Area 10 as well as houses in Gishiri, among other places. Information report that the Minister was still coming to the office and attending to official engagements. He was said to have ordered the Task Force on City Sanitation to clear shops at the UTC market and carry out the comprehensive culinary clearing exercise at Gishiri, a statement opposite the settlement opposite popular knee conjunction. Last week, he announced that the Federal Executive Council had approved some contracts running into billions of naira for the Federal Capital Territory. And to the next story from Southwest. 
traditional ruler is rulers in southwest under the aegis of Yoruba Obas Forum on Tuesday warned against blocks to truncate the May 29 inauguration of President-elect Bola Ahmed Tinubu, insisting that nothing should stop the inauguration of the President-elect and Vice President-elect Kashim Shetima. The traditional rulers also appealed to the incoming administration to grant constitutional roles to monarchs in line with the 1969 constitution. The monarchs, in a statement by the President and Secretary General of the Forum, the Moloko of Atijeri, Obasamo of Adeoye, and the Olukoto of Ikotunile, Oba Adruzak Abioye, the Forum said constitutional roles for monarchs in the country would foster stability in the polity. The statement said, we enjoin the incoming president of Nigeria, Bola Ahmed Tinumbu, and his vice, Kashim Shetima, to consider giving constitutional roles to the traditional rulers in the country, which we believe would go a long way to bring the dividends of democracy closer to the rural areas, as well as to co its security in the nation, being the chief security officers of our respective domains. Others include the diversification of the economy to co dependence on crude oil, with a special focus on agriculture, tourism, and mining under the partnership between the government and the traditional rulers. The monarchs further warned against any plot to scuttle the swearing in of Tinumbu and Shetima on May 29, noting that the inauguration remains sacrosanct. Moving on to the next story on the world news. Lagos State's governor, Babajide Sawolu, has asked all political appointees in the state to declare their assets while handing over the affairs of their offices to latest by Friday, May 26. He said the declaration of assets is in compliance with the provision of paragraph 11, bracket 1b, path 1 of the fifth schedule of the Nigeria constitution on end of tenure asset declaration. Sawolu, who gave the directive in a cycle last signed by head of service, Mori Okola, said the affected offices are commissioners, special advisors, cabinet and non-cabinet, all assistants, senior special assistant, special assistant, personal assistant, personal assistant, technical assistant and personal aides. He directed the officer to prepare individual and over, note and return any government property including utility project vehicles in their possessions to the accounting officer, most senior director of the respective ministries, department and agencies MDAs. However, political appointees whose appointments are by legislation, tenure base and members of statutory commissions, governing council that their tenure have not lapsed are not affected by the directive unless otherwise formally informed, the cycle had noted. Some will thank the appointees and wish them well in their future endeavors. The governor was sworn in on Monday for his second term in office after winning the March 18 governorship election in the state. The Mayeti Alakatu Breeders Association of Nigeria, MAPPAN, in the FCT, has promised that no cow will be seen loitering the streets during the presidential inauguration on May 29. This is contained in a statement by Janet Penny, Dutch, I beg your pardon, Bene Cheney in the Abuja Environmental Protection Board spokesperson on Wednesday in Abuja. We will help to ensure that no cow is seen loitering the city before the big day, said the chairman of MAPPAN in the FCT. Usman Mohammed during a meeting with the FCT Minister Mohammed Bello. He added, it is our culture to receive a visitor in a very clean and tidy environment, and in this case, the incoming government is the visitor. Mr. Mohammed promised to ensure a clean environment. The chairman appealed to the incoming government to come to their aid, as cattle Rosman remains a big threat, stating that over 300 cows were stolen from his blood brother recently. Also, Adam Murabo, chairman of the Abuja Municipal Area Council, branch of the association, promised to immediately take the message to every Ada in his domain on the need to cooperate with the government to ensure that the inauguration is peacefully and successfully done in a tidy and neat environment. He assured that the message will be conveyed to Ada not to allow their cows to graze on the streets of FCT. Mr. Abrabo appealed to the FCT minister to adequately provide grazing areas to others in the FCT where they can immediately relocate their cows for a lasting solution. Moving on to the next story. Contrary to information that emerged late Tuesday night over a lead bomb explosion at the Eagle Square, venue of the May 29 presidential inauguration, the FCT Police Command has debunked the story. Public Relations Officer FPRO SP Josephine Ade 
in a statement in Abuja, said coastal boats headed towards the Inyanya Access caught fire within the vicinity of Eagle Square at about 9 p.m. Today, Tuesday, May 23, 2023, at about 9 p.m., which is yesterday, a coastal boat heading towards the Inyanya Access from Wusei was noticed with burning flames underneath, suspected to be due to a mechanical fault. The driver's attention was eventually gotten close to Eagle Square by Shea Ushagari Way, where the flames increased. The occupants safely alighted before the fire raced down the balls. No life or personal or personal effect other than the raised vehicle was damaged as the situation was aptly managed by police operatives from the central police station, thereby curbing any form of escalation at this stated. According to R, members of the public are therefore enjoined to disregard contrary and misleading narratives emanating from malicious and misguided quarters, even as the command continues to intensify the security of the territory in this transitional period and beyond. Going on to next story. Afrobeat musician Shion Kuti was at the Yaba Magistrate Court on Wednesday today for the proceedings that were adjourned on Tuesday due to the magistrate's absence. There were a mild drama in the court which was witnessed by the Chief Magistrate Adeola Olatupusun as the Nigeria police effort to charge musician Shion Kuti afresh for assault was blocked by human rights attorney Femi Falano-san. Falano raised two critical legal objections. First, he noted that the police were just presenting the first charges to him in court instead of 48 hours prescribed by the law and therefore failed to provide a dividend and defendant with adequate time to prepare his defense. Second, following the magistrate court order that the case file should be sent to the Directorate of Public Prosecutions, Falano described the police prosecutor's latest efforts as contemptuous of the court order. The chief magistrate ordered the police to seek DPP's legal advice on May 16, 2023 but the police refused to adhere to the order. Falano told the court that they can't prosecute unless they appeal the judge's order. Sheung's lawyer had said the purpose of Tuesday's sitting was to receive the Lagos State's Director of Public Prosecutions, DPP, advice. The legal team on Tuesday said the court, as you will recall, had ordered that the prosecution of the case must, by, must be by the DPP's office and not by the police. Hence, the police was also ordered to send the case file to the DPP for evaluation and decision as to prosecution. And to foreign story. The World Health Organization has raised the alarm over the looming of another deadlier pandemic. The Director General of the Organization, Dr. Tedros Adnan, says gave this warning on Tuesday while delivering his report on the 76th World Health Assembly at WHO headquarters in Geneva, Switzerland. He called for the world to pull together and make the difficult decisions needed to end the COVID-19 pandemic within the next year. He said although COVID-19 may no longer be a global public health emergency, countries must still strengthen response to the disease and prepare for future pandemics and other threats. Pandemics are far from the only threat we face, he added, underscoring the need for effective global mechanism that addresses and respond to emergencies of all kinds. When the next pandemic comes knocking and it will, we must be ready to answer decisively, collectively and equitably, he advised. And to end the story for today is a sports story. Italy on the 20 head coach Kamin Nonziata is looking forward to a difficult encounter against the Flying Eagles of Nigeria today. Yel Azuri will take on the West Africans in their second group game. The Fixture at the ongoing 2023 FIFA Under 20 World Cup at the Estadio Malvinas Argentina, Mendoza. New Zealanders charges defeated Brazil 3 2 in their opening fixtures on Sunday. Victory against the Flying Eagles will guarantee a place in the round of 16. The Gaffer, however, knows it won't be an easy task, especially with the physicality and the speed of Flying Eagles players. A strong team, difficult to face because they have extremely physical players endowed with great speed. It won't be easy, an important match to continue our journey in this World Cup, Nunziata told the Italian Football Federation official website. That ends the World News this hour before we go some major headlines. Buhari to dissolve cabinet as he presides over his last FEC meeting. Buhari writes Senate seeks approval to pay 226 billion naira. 
and over Pentami Mumu's belongings out of office. Also, Yoruba Oba set agenda for the incoming government. And on sports, it won't be easy. Italy coach anticipates difficult tests against the Flying Eagles of Nigeria. For more updates of our broadcast on YouTube, our handle is BGI TV Correct. Kindly subscribe and click on the notification bell, select option all to access our broadcast on Facebook by Gate Emo with Alawi Adebayo. Please like and follow the page. For other placement of goods and services, coverage of events and functions, please dial the phone number streaming on your screen. Thank you for watching. I am Moriri Rebila Lawa. Good evening.